I read the so-called worst Cosmere book by Brandon Sanderson and I have some thoughts. I've had the Landris on my TBR for a very long time, but I've kept putting it off for two specific reasons. Firstly, out of all the full-length novels in the Cosmere, Elantris has the worst average rating on Goodreads, although it's not bad. Secondly, I've heard again and again that Elantris is arguably Sanderson's weakest Cosmere novel since it was his first published book. Straight up with you guys. This is probably my least favorite Brandon Sanderson book that I've read. And with this book, his voice is not as prominent. And so I, I think I was just underwhelmed by that aspect. Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book I'm aware of him putting out. And it's interesting to see where he came from. There is some obvious stuff that's not as well done as his later works. And there's some stuff that is still done really surprisingly well. I did enjoy the process and it is still my least favorite Cosmere book. And I just finished editing. I really do apologize for the bad audio. We still haven't returned back to UK, so yeah, we just keep moving around. But on a positive note, my wife, she says hi. <laughs> Enjoy the video. But let's talk about Atlantis, shall we? Let me start by saying, if you compare this book to either Mistborn Era 1 or The Way of Kings, then yes, you could say that Atlantis is not that good. But if this novel was written by anyone else than Brandon Sanderson, then I don't think we would speak about this book in this way. Let me start by saying that I still haven't read all of the books in the Cosmere. I still need to continue the Stormlight Archive. I haven't read Arcanum Unbounded or Bands of Mourning in Mistborn Era 2. But this is definitely not the worst Cosmere book in my opinion. Actually, I really, really enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one much more than Warbreaker and much, much more than Mistborn Era 2 so far. There, I said it. I rate Elantris higher than Warbreaker, at least on my first read. Is Elantris my favorite Cosmere book? No. Is it worth reading? Absolutely. Let's talk about it. Firstly, Elantris was first published in 2005 and is a fantasy standalone novel which takes place on the planet Cell. There's also another story called uh, The Emperor's Soul, which is a highly regarded as almost a masterpiece among booktubers, which I'm very excited to read now. But as far as I know, then these two stories are totally separate from each other, so you can either start with reading Elantris or you can read Emperor's Soul. Now, Elantris takes place across multiple locations, but at the very heart of the story is the city of Elantris. The Elantis is, or was I should say, this absolutely magical and wondrous city, which was absolutely beautiful and full of these demigods, as you can call them, that had these magical abilities. And these demigods would use their magic to benefit the wider society. Now, suddenly the magic in Elantis has stopped working, which has left the Elantians to become almost like zombies or leper-like people, where they have no power. And the worst thing is that these demigods now, if they break their arm, for example, they just never heal. As a result of the magic disappearing in the city of Atlantis, the city has now become quarantined. No one is allowed to go in or out of the city, and now you're left with a city full of these leopards who constantly feel hunger, they can't get healed, and they're basically just left for their own demise. So that is basically the setting. And then outside of Elantris, we have different kingdoms and families fighting for power, a lot of conspiracies, and then there's also a big focus on religion throughout the whole book. So why did I enjoy this book so much? Well, I can break it down into three areas. World building, characters, and themes. Let's go through each of these, shall we? And then at the end, I'll finally get to some criticisms. But if firstly, a special thanks to my patrons. I really, really appreciate the support. Now, let's talk about world building, shall we? This probably doesn't come to any surprise when we're talking about a Brandon Sanderson book, but the world building in Atlantis is absolutely brilliant. I think the major issues with Atlantis is that a lot of people have either read Mistborn or Stormlight Archive first, and then they go back to this novel and compare them. And if you do that, then yes, the world building will feel a lot weaker. That being said, if this book was written by someone else than Sanderson, then I think a lot more people would appreciate the world building. It is simply because Sanderson has written some absolutely S-tier books that we almost get disappointed when we read this book because it doesn't reach the same heights as some of his other novels. And in a lot of ways, I don't necessarily think that's unfair to do. But if you look at the world building, the world is rich with lore and history. This world already has some established kingdoms, clans, religions, and a very intricate and interesting magic system, which makes this world feel very real. But my very favorite part of this whole story is the city of Elantris. 
I am a sucker for the dying world trope, and this is exactly it. The world has moved on, and we get to see the consequences of a world that used to have amazing magical abilities that now have disappeared. It kinda makes you wonder what would happen if we suddenly lost, for example, the internet or electricity. Wouldn't our world also just fall into despair? Also, we get to see how clans have formed inside of the city of Atlantis and how anarchy has shaped the life within the city and I really enjoyed seeing that. I thought the world building was absolutely solid. Now, let's move on to character work. Again, I was quite surprised by how much I enjoyed the characters in this book. Elantris is a multiple POV story where we follow a devout religious leader who is planning on changing the whole world through his religion. We then also follow a character that has just arrived in Elantris and we get to learn about the city from a person that is stuck inside of this city. And then we also have a noble princess who is thrown into the heart of the politics outside of Elantris. And this mix of POVs really allows the reader to get a, get a clear picture of all the moving parts in this story. My favorite character is definitely Prince Rayodin, who is one of the ones who are stricken by this curse of Elantris. Rayodin is such a great character and also very noble. I suppose you could say that Prince Rayodin is almost too perfect or noble, but it was really nice to see that contrast between the city of Elantris and Prince Rayodin's attitude to life. So overall, I found the character work of especially the main characters to be quite good and enjoyable. But before I come to some of my criticisms, let's talk about the themes, because this is where I really think the book starts to shine, in my opinion. Now, I have always loved Hero of Ages, which is book 3 in the Mistborn trilogy, because it has a lot of interesting things to say about religion and its role in everyone's lives and society as a whole. But when it comes to the commentary on religion, Elantris takes it to a whole nother level. And this is very interesting to me, especially since I am a Christian myself. In this world where Elantris takes place, we have different religions, and we constantly see the power struggles between the religions. And what I really enjoyed is how Sanderson portrays the different relationship people have with religion. In this book, some people have a high standing role within a religion and do a lot of work to try and reach more people and convince them to convert. Then you also have some people who focus more on that personal relationship with their god and are maybe not as interested in affecting the culture as a whole. Then you also have these so called politicians who often don't actually believe that much in the religion but they portray themselves as belonging to a certain religious group since they know that they, that will help them to push their own agenda. And lastly, you have the people who really misuse religion in order to get their will. And actually they corrupt the teaching of the religion so they can have their own way. And seeing all these different perspectives represented in a fantasy novel was really fascinating to me. As a Christian, I constantly have to ask myself, how far should I go to tell other people about my beliefs? And what about other people's free will? And how do I make sure that I never get to a point where I use my religion to either manipulate other people or misrepresent the teachings of Jesus? And what about the truth? Should truth be the thing that we value over everything? Or is it our personal values that come first? Most religious people truly have an honest heart when they are pursuing their God. But this book really highlights how easy it can to be blinded and coerced into doing something that you are actually totally against. And Elantris, this book also highlights the complexity when it comes to each person's relationship with religion. It is especially interesting reading this novel knowing that Sanderson himself comes from a religious background. Reading this book definitely made me think about that maybe Sanderson has or maybe still is struggling with some aspects of being religious. So I found that very fascinating. There are also some interesting themes about having second class citizens and the morality of quarantining people because of their illness, which is especially interesting in light of our recent times. So that is what has really stayed with me over anything else. I found it absolutely fascinating to see how religion was portrayed in this novel. But I do have some minor criticisms. Firstly, some of the dialogue felt quite weak in my opinion. There were some instances where I was thinking, would anyone actually say that? I can definitely say that Sanderson's dialogue has improved since Elantris. Also, some of the side characters definitely didn't have that much depth, but I suppose when you're writing a fantasy standalone novel, 
you kind of have to choose which characters you want to focus on. And lastly, you could argue that some aspects of the plot were maybe a bit too predictable. But that being said, I definitely think that Atlantis was a really great read and I would recommend you picking it up if you haven't yet. I gave Atlantis 4 out of 5 stars and I'm really excited now to read Emperor's Soul hopefully soon. So what about you? Have you read Atlantis? Do you think this is Sanderson's weakest novel yet? I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to support what I do here, make sure to check out my Patreon. See you in the next video.